Hello everyone, welcome back to the kitchen table. Um, today on the kitchen table, as you can see, uh, we, we've got the very, very old laptop with windows on it that I need to use to connect to my um, F450, or in fact to any of my, uh, any of my DJI quads. Because um, I'm going to just show you um, the setup on the standalone NASA for the F450. Um, before we go any further, as is traditional of course, uh, it's the daytime and you know it's coffee time in the mug so usual thing Guatemalan home roasted you know the score by now cheers mm. so I've got the F450 um, on and connected and hit DJI NASA M assistant version 2.2 which is what I'm going to load up and we'll show you what you see Okay, so for those of you who've got um, Phantom 2 or uh, Vision or anything like that, this will look fairly familiar, but there's a lot more information. So the first screen is your basic um, setup so you can double check what's going on. So you've got things like where your GPS is mounted, we'll talk about that in a second, what type of multi-rotor you've got, receiver type. Um, motor settings, what fail safe mode you've got, is IOC on, is your gimbal on, voltage protection levels, and obviously over here, the stip monitor and that everything's working, and your gains, which we'll talk about in a second. So here's the thing that you need to set up. When you first plug your new NASA in and you've mounted it, you won't have, it won't know what it's mounted to and you need to, unlike with the Phantoms, and this is where I had to do a bit of digging around and just a bit of reading up, you need to tell it everything. It, it is just, as far as it's concerned, could be in control of any kind of multi-rotor. So you need to tell it what you've got. And actually the, the assistant is quite good in that, you know, you hover over anything, it will give you a full dis dis description. Um, and these are all the various things, everything from an octo down to hexa Y formats or octa X formats or hexes and, you know, it's a V shape or whatever. Usually, if you're doing an F450 like me, you'd want a quad rotor in an X formation. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to use that as the front, but anyway, you can. You can then run a little motor test if you wish, which will actually spin them briefly so you can check that they're going in the right direction because that is obviously an important thing. Um, something that I did and found that two of mine were not and you just swap the wires around um, uh, on the motors and you know, you'll be able to get it reversed. Now this was something that you got to do quite carefully. Mounting uh, of where the GPS um, puck is located in respect of the center of gravity. Now when I built my 450 I tried to make sure that the the center of gravity was around about the middle and I, I've got the battery on top that I can move you know forwards or backwards and get it pretty much there or thereabouts. And so again quite a good graph here that explains which what numbers you need to put in and all I did was basically get a tape measure and measured the distance between the NASA and the height of the puck, the z-axis and the y-axis and then you just input those numbers there wherever you've put yours green is negative red is positive which is why I've got minus 11 because it's obviously positive uh, sorry red is positive so I mine is actually in a minus from the z because it's above the aircraft and it gives you you know again it talks you through through all the bits and pieces um, RC will give you what receiver type I'm using the um, DT07, the DJI receiver and transmitter pack, which is D-Bus. Um, you calibrate your sticks, again, as, as per usual with the other NASA assistant stick calibration um, and uh, the other channels and what you want to have on your third position for S1, which I have chosen manual. And I had a little go on that. I might talk about that a bit later. And the gains. So for those who don't know about gains, there's two types of gain, okay? You've got your basic gain and your attitude gain. Attitude gains are how responsive the aircraft is to your inputs. So if you are doing this, it's basically how does it, 
actually wrong wrong stick. If you're doing this, it's basically how does the aircraft react to your input, and you can choose you can change the pitch and the roll. So it's right stick. The higher the gain figure, the more responsive, the more snappy it will be. Um, the lower the gain figure, the more sort of mushy and gentle it will be. Depending on what you want to use, if you've got a if you want a tricked out super duper speed machine, you might want higher gains in these. If you're wanting to maybe look at aerial video or photography later on, or just for general handling, these are the numbers that I've put in here. And basic gain is, but this this is what does the NASA controller? What does it? Um, how sensitive is it to changes when it notices that the aircraft's drifting off off hold? So basically, if it if it feels that it's drifting in pitch, roll your or in vertical, how quickly should it react to that? The trouble with making it react too quickly is you can get into um, into a situation where it, it it over controls and then it tries to control itself again, and you get into oscillation. So again, the adjustments here are quite good in that it talks you through what you need to do. Increase the basic gains 10% of the time until the aircraft hovers or lightly oscillates and then decrease it until you've got a, a you know no oscillation. And that's what I did. I had a little fiddle with these and I'm pretty pretty happy with, with my numbers. It's amazing. You look at the DJI recommended numbers, what other people on the internet have put on theirs, but they're all different. It just seems to be that one of those things. Um, so have a, have a read up on that. Very popular all of a sudden, aren't I? Um, okay, so advanced settings, motor settings. I haven't looked at this. I've gone for recommending your motor idle speed. I, I don't know why you'd like to, to have it high or low or whatever, but there we go. This is important cutoff type. Um, I wouldn't recommend you go for immediately. Um, in any control mode, once the motor starts and the throttle stick is over 10%, the motor will stop immediately when the throttle stick is back under 10%. No, um, uh, intelligent, in any control mode, only push both sticks to the left or right can stop the motors. In ATI or GPS mode, any one of the following cases will stop the motors. You don't push the throttle stick after the motor starts in three seconds. Throttle stick is under 10% and after landing for three seconds, which is how I mentioned in a previous video about the Phantom, how you, I stop my motors. Or well, the slope angle is over 70 degrees and the throttle stick is under 10. So if you've come to a grief in a tree, um, again, uh, Let's just go for intelligent, I would suggest, unless you've got a particular reason why you want it to stop when you're under 10%. Fail safe, uh, you can either get to, get it to land or to go home and land. And again, the graphics are pretty good. It's self-explanatory, the text is good. Intelligent orientation, uh, sorry, intelligent ori orient. <laughs> you know me by now, this isn't a professional channel. I'm not gonna edit that out. Intelligent orientation control. I have switched on, and then you obviously calibrate the, um, the S2 switch. Gimbal, I don't have one, switched it off. Um, um, there are various other settings here and you can obviously do the servo travel limits and the gain on the gimbal. Um, I, when I get a gimbal, if I get a gimbal for this one, I will look into that. Uh, let's just go to limits. This is the flight limits, which has been standard on the other, on the, on the sort of phantoms. This is how far and how high it can go I've set mine to two kilometers in, in I just left it as default. I, I don't ever get that far. Voltage protection. This is something that I still need to tweak a little bit. And this is the vo low voltage alert. And basically it actually talks you through how to set this. And it, it involves flying your, your, your multi-rotor in a hover until it, you get a warning, you get the first stage warning, landing it, checking the voltages, and then putting a loss voltage in. I need to tweak this a little bit. Um, but it's basically it will give you that uh, that sort of first warning that uh, that your 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 battery is is getting low, and then on the second warning it will start to auto land. Um, again, there's a there's a whole kind of uh, description on how you set that up, which I recommend you read. Um, then in tools you've got here export and import parameters, so you can actually uh, save everything that you've got. So if you're going to do some some tweaking and, and you mess everything up you can instantly reload in your saved parameters, which is very handy. And then on here, we've obviously got the usual thing, the, the um, IMU figures, which you'll be familiar with if you've got the uh, Phantom range, uh, IMU calibrations and that sort of thing. And then again here, you've got the upgrade. And obviously on this one, we have only a main controller 
and the power management unit. And uh, the, the updating with this is exactly the same. So um, there we go. That's what I've done. And that's the settings that I've got um, for the F450. Um, relatively straightforward, although a bit daunting when you first come in and all of these need for populating. But a lot of the defaults are in there and you can tweak. Um, and then we need to go flying it. So perhaps we ought to cut to the maiden flight and see how it went. Hello everybody, welcome back, not to the kitchen table, but to the back garden. We are going to do the maiden flight of the quadcopter, filmed by Tom, so he apologises in advance for any shaky camera work, he's very excited. So here we are, um, we're going to see what happens. I've, I've kind of set the gains where I think they're going to be, and I'll talk about all this in another video, um, about what settings we've got, but let's, let's see if it crashes and burns or not. So, transmitter's on, switches are all up. Let's plug it in and then we'll see what happens. So, so far so good. We're going to wait for that, uh, for the LED to give us the fact that we've got a satellite lock. So we want to see uh, some rapid flashing greens and preferably no flashing reds. Although I was talking to somebody via email today with a Vision Plus who said that they couldn't get full satellite lock so maybe it's one of those days in the UK but we shall find out mm, waiting wait oh all right it knows where its orientation is we should get another flash to hopefully mean it's got a home lock just in case we're only gonna do a low hover test because it's not exactly an open space but there we go all right then let's go back a bit just in case all right then, here we go. CSC everybody, fingers crossed. Can you put the camera, that's it, put the, put the quad in shot, Tom. Here we go. Oh, it lives. All right, here we go then. I'm gonna do a quick takeoff, Tom, if you follow it. Ready, here we go, fingers crossed. It's windy and gusty. And we still haven't got a full sat lock, but it flies and it's not all over the place. I've got some control here. Yeah, there's a, let's try a hover. That's better. You can see we've still got one red flash. We're not fully, um, fully locked. There we go. Proof of the concept. I'm going to bring it in now because it's a bit choppy. Let's go for a landing. Oh yeah! So there we go. Um, the 450 complete, maidened. Um, a bit, uh, bit gusty and wobbly that day, but you know we couldn't wait, as you can't in these things. Um, and it was just to sort of prove that it's flown. Since then, I've done lots of hover testing to get the um, battery voltage monitoring sort of right. Still need to tweak that, not quite happy with um, with that. But um, it's pretty much giving me, uh, with this setup, with the, the, the 3S, sorry, the 4S um, battery, um, it's looking like I'm getting not a million miles off 15 minutes flight time per battery which is excellent. And there we go. So yeah, lots more testing to do. Need to take it out and do some more sort of um, a bit more wilder flying. I've been going very cautiously and just hover testing. I need to go out and give it a bit more and, and just check that the gains are, are reasonable for sort of my flying style. But it sounds great with the smaller props and the bigger battery in. Um, and and it's, it's, it's hovering really nicely and it's flying really well. It's just getting used to it really. And then I'm going to use it to teach. Um, I'm going to use it to teach Tom to fly, 
Um, he knows the basics, but you know, to, to be able to really sort of give it to him hands off. Um, and also, I'm going to use it to teach myself manual because interestingly, with this setup, uh, if you flick it into manual, it starts to climb. Whereas with the Phantom, if you flick it into manual, it starts to plummet. So this one's a little bit easier, I think, to get your head around. Although having done it for about two mi uh, two minutes, about two seconds, um, yeah, it's basically just the same as a as a little hub stand around the house. Uh, only it's much bigger, much more expensive, and outside. So yeah, that that'll require some work. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the series. Um, I might do a further update if I come to add anything else onto it. Any other bits? There might be a camera going on. There might be a gimbal. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you've been vaguely interested, I, I really recommend building your own as a as a really good exercise. We did it on the kitchen table. Minimum of tools. A soldering iron is pretty much the only thing I had to buy. Um, and it was good. For those who've asked me about breakdowns, what I'll do is I'll put in the video description at the bottom a, a complete breakdown of, of what the recommended retail price is for all these bits. Um, they change all the time and some of them I bought months ago and the price has gone up and down. Also the, the pound is getting stronger against the dollar. So I will just put um, a kind of a, a rough recommended price in sterling. And then, you know, if you want to buy the bits and pieces, you can buy them like we did over a period of time. And suddenly it doesn't seem quite so expensive as going out and buying it in one hit. And, and it's, you know, it's something to, to do. Great little father-son bonding. Um, Tom isn't here again because, you know, he's got more of a social life than I have. Um, but yeah, it's been really good. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. And um, we'll see you again soon back on the kitchen table. Cheers.